Adidas is losing another $200 million. This time, it's due to Beyonce. So, more celebrity brands are failing. Adidas is set to lose $200 million on Beyonce's Ivory Park this year. That's on top of the $1.3 billion loss from Yeezys, even though they've made an agreement with Yeezy. Um, so, anyway, let's talk about Beyonce and why her product is failing. Um, so, here's this guy. He, you know, put out this tweet explaining what went wrong in order to work uh in order to work with wait in order to work a celeb brand needs to get three things right so you guys saw the video i did on kim kardashian's harvard class and one of the students in the class talked about some key components that contributed to kim's success that's what she broke down in the class so why is beyonce a far more respected artist artist doing terrible numbers compared to Kim Kardashian. Now, terrible numbers <laughs> is not it's not terrible numbers. Beyonce's making a lot of money. <laughs> she's make I think she made 40 million last year. She didn't meet projected sales, but she's making money. And let's remember that most businesses fail. It's hard to succeed in any business. It's hard to make a profitable business. Ivory Park, well, actually I don't know if it's profitable, but I do know the sales were far less than projected. So so here are some of the things. Here's the, here's the first thing he says. Authentic to the celebrity creator. Ivory Park sales fell 50% in 2022. Adidas projected 250 million, but the brand only brought in 40 million. Ouch. Beyonce has an aspirational, aloof persona that's at odds with Ivory Park's athleisure, athleisure style. Athleisure style. Um... In my opinion, she should have created a luxury brand. So this is an interesting take here. Basically, he's saying that, you know, Beyonce's brand is not aligned with Ivory Park's brand. Like this athlete, athleisure, I guess that's a word now they're putting together. This athleisure brand that they've put, athleticism meets leisure. Um, it doesn't suit Beyonce's brand as much as, yeah, Beyonce is a dancer, but Beyonce has a very m more fabulous diva kind of branding. So it doesn't align. If I'm thinking I'm, you know, I'm going to wear some athletic clothes. I'm not going to think about Beyonce. Like I'm going to think about LeBron James. I'm going to think about maybe a, a female athlete, you know, somebody like that, that would suit their persona. But Ivory Park doesn't suit Beyonce's persona. That's why it doesn't sell. With Skims, if I use Skims as, a, an ex as an example, it suits Kim's persona. This body shaping stuff, you know, um, especially the body shaper, that's probably her key product, right? She has other products, but that really suits her whole brand. Her body is her brand. So anything to do with like, you know, these like skim tight clothing that shows your shape and it's also you know all these elements that suits kim kardashian and i think that's where beyonce really failed at right with ivory park so here's another thing that he says he brings up rihanna here okay have a genuine new oh wait have a genuine net new insight what does that mean uh, the two best case studies for celebrity brands are Fenty and Skims. Both had a unique insight. Okay. Fenty makeup should come in more shades for for people of color. Skims shapewear is out outerwear. Okay. So basically have a unique take on something. Um, a unique net insight, right? A genuine net new site. Okay, so they're basically targeting um, a new audience that hasn't been captured already is pretty much what he's saying. And, and capturing also a branding that hasn't been done before. So with Rihanna, you know, you have a lot of people feeling, especially black people, people with different skin tones, feeling excluded from most makeup brands. And so with this, Rihanna said, I'm going to appeal to everyone. I'm going to tackle all colors of the rainbow which makes it more inclusive which is more new aged and more relevant for the times that we're in with this whole inclusion branding going on across the board across the whole media landscape rihanna capitalized on that um skims 
I think I like he has an interesting take to skims. He says shapewear is outerwear. Um, that's a good one, but I don't, I wouldn't even say that was skims, a unique selling point. You know, you know what I would say skims did very well. How would I describe it? Um, is that she sort of made it as though in a way it was more like access. It was more about inclusion as well. It's like, you can have my body too. Literally, that's kind of what I see with skims. You can look like Kim Kardashian too. And I don't think it's literal, but you can attempt to. And she's giving everybody access to her body through skims clothing. And you see that in her branding because she has people, she also has inclusive branding, right? With women of all shapes and sizes standing next to her and wearing the skims and getting tighter waists doing it. They might not achieve Kim's tight waist, but they have access to be able to tighten their waist and get closer to Kim in a way. So in the same way, I think Kim has done inclusion branding and that helped her brand, um, as well as Rihanna's. So the last thing he says is move beyond a celeb figurehead, move beyond a celeb figurehead. So this is exactly what Kim said in her Harvard class. If you watch the video link down below, uh, I interviewed a student that attended the Harvard class. Kim said that she wanted to build a brand that was bigger than her. This is the most important component to any entrepreneur to build something that is bigger than you. You should be able to die and your brand is still going to exist and thrive like Steve Jobs. Now, when it comes to Kim Kardashian, most celebrity brands are attached to the celebrity's image. And Kim wanted to ensure that Skims was not attached to her image. This is why she collaborated. When you see her campaigns, like he shows on here, she has all sorts of different celebrities. She has all sorts of different influencers, athletes using Skims and pushing it bef beyond Kim Kardashian. And I love that, you know, the name Skims, it actually has her name in it. You know, <laughs> it has her name in it, Kim, right? Or Kim's, but Skims, it has her name in it. But at the same time, you don't associate it with her. That's a very, it's subliminal marketing that she's there, but she's not at the same time. You know, it's Kim Kardashian's brand, but you don't necessarily, the first thing that you think of when you think of Skims is not Kim Kardashian, but it's the tight fitted clothing and it's the competition to Spanx, but in a more sort of elegant, more um, accessible um, way and more trendy way. And so that's, to me, the real unique selling point when it comes to skims. Um, and, 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 you know, so move beyond a celeb figurehead. The best brands elevate themselves beyond one person. See, skims marketing now rarely features Kim. They brilliantly tapped, uh, taped uh, Mia and Lucia. I don't know these people from White Lotus. OK, all right. For their Valentine's campaign, uh, right when the two women were embedded in so here's the thing right i've noticed this about skims branding too kim not only does she um, use other p influencers and people for her brands like i mentioned but she also um taps into trending a uh, conversations trending topics i realized when snoop dogg when snoop dogg's uh, daughter got engaged and she was all in the news notice how Skims came out with like a whole Snoop Dogg collection with his whole family, including her husband's, including her boyfriend's, um, Snoop's daughter's fiance. He was also in that campaign, which is so interesting. And it was almost like, did the Kardashian PR machine plan this thing out and push this story to the blogs? Because it was so interesting, the timing. Another one was recently with the whole alien invasion sort of conversation that was going on earlier in February with all the, you know, um, UFOs, unidentified objects flying in the U.S., the balloon that they shot down, said it was the Chinese. But people were also having conversations around UFOs. And Kim goes and does this whole UFO campaign you know, where she has aliens dress, you know, and it's like, she's tapping into hot topics as they are happening in real time. And it's almost like, it's crazy because I don't know how she's doing it. Like, do you just like, 
something goes trending and then within the week you shoot it and it's out or within a couple of days you shoot it and it's out. I don't know how she does it, but she taps into trends um, and she uses that to push her marketing. Um, so, but the thing about Beyonce, I just kind of feel with Ivory Park, Beyonce is just too busy for that brand. It's kind of just like, you know, an occasion she like, when she f sees fit, she taps into it and she uses it as a tool and she sends it to celebrities as a special gift from Beyonce, but it's still attached to the Beyonce name. She's using her superstardom, you know, to look at, to, to brand it as a cool gift from Beyonce, but that hype is short lived because it's so re it's redundant also it's like okay this person got a package from Beyonce cool she's definitely tapped into sort of an influencer campaign but I think it's less effective than what Kim has done Kim Kardashian has done Kim has tapped into trending conversations and she utilizes influence influencers in that way Beyonce has sort of it's almost like She's in a way idolizing herself and saying, oh, you got, you get a gift from Beyonce and that's an honor for you to receive a gift from Beyonce. And that's kind of the packaging, which is great, but I just don't feel that it's relatable to a lot of people because not everybody, uh, sees Beyonce in that light. Uh, not everybody respects Beyonce in that way. I've rejoined the beehive after 14 years <laughs> in hiatus, <laughs> But I'm just saying, not everybody sees Beyonce like that. So not everybody's going to respect um, the gift in that way. And also, if you do it so many times, it just kind of gets boring. Um, so those are the ways that I think that Kim, or the, I, those are the reasons that I think that uh, Beyonce has struggled um, with this. But okay, let's see what else this guy says. The danger facing celebrity brands is uh, is to be too closely associated with the celebrity. Kylie Cosmetics saw sales fall 50% when Kylie took a break from posting on it to Instagram during her pregnancy. 50%. Wow. And Adidas and Adidas will lose 1.3 billion from Kanye from Yeezy after Kanye's self-destruction. That's interesting, but Yeezys will still sell because I feel like Yeezys are just, are more than Kanye. I think, I don't know. There's something about shoes. It's kind of like Jordans, you know, it's, it's more than, when I see Yeezys, I don't think Kanye, I think cool shoes. So he must've done something right. He is Kim Kardashian's ex-husband. So they must've planned this out together, but I feel like Yeezys are way bigger than Kanye. Um, the only reason I think he got this destruction affected Yeezys is because he kept talking about Yeezys and he juxtaposed that conversation about Adidas and Yeezys with his anti-Semitism, his anti-blackness and all those things. He sort of interweaved that conversation together. And that's why I think, you know, he was attacked directly, but I think he would have been attacked either way. Um, Fenty and Skims in injected new energy into sales categories by introducing high quality products yes but is blue i don't know if that beyonce stuff isn't high quality people can sniff out inauthentic and low effort inauthenticity and low effort in the long run the best product still wins i'm more bullish on celebrity and creators as uh, curators um taste makers that better monetize their influence with products recommendations new companies like flagship let creators be retailers curating favorite products in their own boutiques okay it's hard to create an enduring brand most celebrity brands will still fade away the ones rate uh, the ones raking in hundreds of millions or even billions in re revenue fenty is reportedly north of 1 billion are the exceptions right so i just think the, the whole takeaway that i have from all of this is be the exception think like a business and entrepreneur and build a brand that is beyond your influence i still think influence is so important to use as a stepping stone to building a strong brand but it's only a it's that's what it is it's a stepping stone it's not the end all be all use that stepping stone and progress from there Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, all the above. Don't forget to follow. Don't forget to follow Ray Messenger. Ray the AI. My AI um, app. Uh, yeah, it's it, it's powered by ChatGPT. It's like ChatGPT. DM her right now. Ray the AI. She's growing really fast. 
hundreds of users, hundreds of thousands of views on all our content with Ray Messenger, hundreds of users already. It's exciting times. Go check it out. Go try it out. People love it. Let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, all the above. And I'll see you in the next one. A peace.